This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, this is a case of an lens-induced glaucoma in an elderly lady. She is around 80 years old and she presented with intraocular pressure of more than 50 millimeters and in fact she had so much severe pain she was admitted in a general hospital thinking it was some other condition because she was having intractable vomiting because of the glaucoma well she was treated with topical steroids anti glaucoma medications on the day of the surgery after i minute all the pressure was around 20 and i have decided to do a manual small incision cataract surgery consciously in this patient as expecting some amount of zonular weakness and uh, looking at this situation I thought I would rather go with manual small incision cataract surgery and avoid fake in this case. Once the conjunctival flap is raised I make a small scleral groove much more posterior than the intended area of incision. This acts like a fixation groove for me. I stabilize the globe using a Hoskin forceps and then I make a 6 mm frown shaped scleral incision. My assistant is irrigating with the BSS just to aid my visualization as I am not using any cautery. Crescent knife is being used to create the sclerocorneal tunnel. If you can note here at the midpoint, the scleral incision is about 1.5 mm posterior to the posterior limbus and intracornearly also it's going to be around 1.5 mm anterior to the limbus wherein we'll have the internal point of entry. And this is going to be the corneal wall which is going to help us in creating this self-sealing incision. The tunnel is being extended on either side laterally. The structure of the tunnel is such that the internal opening is always going to be slightly wider than the external incision. The side ports are created and the anti-capsule is stained under an air bubble with trypan blue. The first inclination of the presence of any zonular weakness will be appreciated only during the creation of the rexus. So if we have the zonular weakness then when trying to do the rexus we would be seeing those wrinkling of the anterior capsule and tearing the capsule is going to be difficult. So that's the only moment where actually I can confirm the presence or absence of zonular weakness. After filling the chamber with dispersive OVD, the anterior chamber is entered using a sharp keratome and I have extended the entire width of the tunnel. The internal lip always runs parallel to the limbus. So always we have the internal lip at least 1 mm away from the limbus. This ensures the self-sealing nature of this wound. As soon as I puncture the anterior capsule, it's expected and the fluid cortex just flows out. Gentle irrigation of BSS ensures that all the loose cortical fluid which had escaped out is emptied out of the bag and also flushed out of the anterior chamber. Once the bag is empty of the liquid cortex and only the nucleus is remaining now, time to do the rexus. The chamber is refilled with OVD and rexus is being initiated now with the help of the forceps. Uh, since I've used a dispersive OVD, it's going to hold the chamber very well uh, when I'm trying to do the rexus with the forceps. At this point, I realized that my initial judgment was wrong and there is hardly any zonular weakness which I was expecting. Uh, the rexus can be created very easily. There is no difficulty in tearing the capsule and there is no wrinkles in the anterior capsule and I could have a perfectly sized and well-centered rexus in this eye. So appearances can be deceptive. That was a message I got with this case. Time to express the nucleus out. Chamber is again deepened with OVD. Using two Sinsky hooks, the nucleus is gently manipulated out of the capsular bag. And then using the FACO sandwich technique, wherein I'll be introducing the vectus beneath the nucleus and the Sinsky hook above it. The nucleus is grasped in between these two instruments and gently pulled out of the antechamber. I'm irrigating the capsular bag with the, the BSS and just to loosen up some of the fibers which could be sticking on to the posterior capsule. Using the hydrodissection cannula, I'm squirting some BSS at these cortical fibers which are sticking on to the posterior capsule. And gentle flushing of the posterior capsule with this BSS is going to release those uh, cortical fibers and the capsule looks to be quite clean now. The bag is deepened with OVD. Although there was no profound zonular weakness, I still prefer to put in a CTR in this eye because of the long-standing nature of the cataract. 
and the CTR is gently threaded into the back followed by injection of the foldable intraocular lens. Time to remove the OVD. I'm just tilting the lens up to slide my irrigation cannula under the intraocular lens to rinse out all the OVD which is in the bag and also the OVD which could be sticking onto the posterior surface of the intraocular lens. Passive irrigation is going to flush out most of the OVD inside the bag. Then the OVD in front of the lens is aspirated. At the same time, some of the remaining cortex is aspirated out. The eye looks clean now. Time to close. The side ports are hydrated. And since the incision is a self-sealing one, I'm not going to suture the scleral tunnel incision. The conjunctival flap, I prefer always to suture it. I'm going to use a 8-0 Vicryl and the knot is tied in such a way that the knot gets buried under the conjunctival flap so the patient does not have any uncomfortable sensation post-op. Uh, these are the post-op pictures. This is on the third post-operative day. Although the cornea is clear, the antechamber shows some degree of inflammation which is to be expected in this uh, cases of lens-induced glaucoma where there would be a lot of preoperative uh, inflammation and it takes some time to settle down. Patient has a vision of uh, 612 and I'm certain that it's going to improve over a period of time. Uh, that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.